lines, this is the, the gold line that you see here is uh, the line that is the predicted high. Uh, the predicted high is uh, not, you know, again, it's not a definite thing, but you can see we have an indication here, the predicted high in numbers, and you can see that the predicted line here, the gold line, kind of goes over the top of the market. The predicted low is that pink line that you see there. Now, there will be times when that predicted range holds up remarkably well. There will be times when it is exceeded depending upon the strength or the weakness of the market. So we kind of, again, have to use the indicator in line with the other indicators, uh, you know, just like we do with almost every type of an indicator that we have. The strategy that I have looked at in terms of developing some kind of way to use this particular tool is to look at 12 above the predicted high or 20 points below the predicted low as an entry point. For example, if you look right here, we had uh, a situation where the market began to turn up. Uh, we had a predicted uh, you know, index start to move up, predicted differences start to move up. So if we now make that assumption that the market is done with its little panic phase and has moved sideways, it is ready to move up, uh, that we might be able to board the market. So uh, in this particular case, uh, you know, we would go 20 points above that predicted high to enter the position. Then immediately we would put a stop 10 points below that, just uh, again half of that predicted high of that uh, that range above the predicted high to exit the market because we don't risk very much. If we enter at a specific point, lose 10 points, that's $500, and that's about the maximum that we would like to be able to to lose on any given trade in the E-mini. Uh, you can see that uh, in the days that we've had this most currently, you can see that on September the 1st, uh, this day right here, we uh, kind of had a a slump there, 11.97 was our predicted low, and if we were to enter the market 20 points below that predicted low, we would sell at left, and so we would have a stop at 11.87. And in this case, uh, you know, probably not showing you a good example because we would have gotten bounced out of that uh, market right there. This uh, nice big candle that we had yesterday on September the 7th would have knocked you out of the market that 10 point loss. Uh, now, if we are looking and using the same strategy, we would say, well, okay, 20 points above that predicted high then, which was 1181, we would be a buyer at 1201. Uh, and I look, we hadn't quite reached that point yet, so we would not, we would not have a position. Uh, we also could be looking at the possibility of being short by going 20 points below the predicted low uh, of today's predicted low. That is 1178 minus 20, so at 1158 uh, might be a short uh, candidate. Now, we do, I didn't know what the jobs report last week was going to do and what the action would cause. Uh, we have President Obama speaking tonight and uh, talking about jobs and so forth, and you know, who knows exactly what he's going to say, who knows how the market will respond. Nobody can know that. But we can know, we can look at our moving averages, we can look at our indicators and get some kind of a clue as to how the market might act, what it might do, because we cannot know uh, precisely, no one can know precisely what it's going to say, uh, of course, unless you have some kind of an inside edge to the White House and then are trading, uh, you know, not supposed to be trading off the inside information, but uh, anyway, we can, we can assume that we won't know. We can assume that we don't know a lot of things about the market. We don't know uh, things that will happen with the global economy. We don't know what the GDP will be. We don't know a lot of different things. And so we need to rely on our indicators, our tools that we have available in the software. Now we're going to look uh, briefly at just a few other markets and to uh, look at them in terms of the moving patterns on the moving average in this particular webinar. We have talked about some of the uh, specifics of uh, the high and low, the predicted high and low trade as a point in some other webinars. And uh, when you look at this one, this happens to be the Euro FX for the last couple of months. And when you look at that, if you're a trend trader, uh, you got to wonder what are you going to do with that? You know, there's not a lot of trend uh, trading to take place. In fact, if you look at that, uh, we did a webinar, uh, I think it was a week ago, we talked more about the possibility of day trading or interday trading within the predicted trading range. And there are some possibilities there that we don't have time uh, to get into there. But uh, in this case, we're looking here again at 
the crossover relations. You know, we would like to know when that market, you know, kind of what kind of a mode is it in? Is it in an uptrend mode or a downtrend? And you can see we do have the predicted moving average moving above the um, actual moving average, kind of a short-term uh, potential trade there to pretty nimble to get into that trade on the long slide side because that's the indicated uh, direction, the trend direction by the moving average. And then it have another crossover. This one is on the downside. Uh, if you'll note that we have a situation here where we had uh, pretty much uh, they're running and coinciding with each other. And you'll notice that the zero line here uh, reflects the same type of thing. A little dip, uh, picture of the situation that it shows the difference between the moving average uh, a little bit more clearly. Uh, more recently, of course, when what we have here is that we have, uh, you know, would have been uh, tending to be a little on the long side. Fundamentally, don't know. You know, would you be on the long side or not? Uh, you know, that's a, another one of those imponderable type questions because of the issues going on in Europe, going on with the euro and uh, you know the whole area over there. Uh, you know, we, for example, we don't know whether the action by the Swiss National Bank uh, to stop the franc at the 120 level uh, will that work? In the first place, uh, we don't know how traders are going to react to that. Uh, you know, effectively, what it has done, it has taken away uh, one of the safe havens, and it kind of uh, turns out now if, it, if that safe haven is gone, at least gold and treasuries, you know, maybe again, that has potential safe havens. But when you look at gold, it's done when it can make a 200-point move in a day, $200 move in a day, or a $100 move or uh, rather in a day. Uh, You've got to wonder, is that a safe haven anymore? When you look at the treasuries, where they're at, is that a safe haven based upon what we think will happen in the future? Now, we don't want to overburden ourselves with too much thinking. We want to look at the charts, but uh, you have to keep those considerations in mind because common sense uh, dictates that you do so. So big thing is we now have the Swiss franc out. We don't know the effect on the euro. Will it turn you know, more people to the dollar instead because that could be a safe haven or some have said maybe uh, some of the Scandinavian c uh, currencies could be more of a safe haven. Uh, we don't know what that will mean for the euro. It, I suspect that eventually it could end kind of badly for some of the other currencies, but, uh, you know, if I do say that and I predict that, I'm pretty much guessing. So uh, best not to guess and look at our charts. So when I look at the charts, again, looking at the moving averages, I can see that the uh, predicted moving average did make a crossover here, and it suggests that we uh, start to make a, a uh, you know, position on the downside, and that does coincide with, I would say, my bias. We know that if we are in this range, uh, you know, let's take out a couple of lines, but we know that we're uh, in this range right in here, that we are pretty much at the top of the range, the euro, and so you have a little bit more comfortable comfort knowing that if you do go short, you have a pretty natural place to put a stop above that range to get out if you're wrong. Well, yes, you might have a loss, but maybe it wouldn't be that horrendous loss. That, you know, we definitely want to try to avoid that. Uh, but when we have the situation as we have uh, currently, uh, the market was chopping sideways. As I said, it was pretty much a uh, intraday type trading phenomena for a while. But then 